Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about series and I'm going to talk about absolute convergence, conditional convergence, and divergence. And I'm going to do three examples, one of each. So um, basically the question is, does the series, um, a sub m, whatever it starts at, um, does the series converge or diverge? This is, which, this is the question we ask when we talk about series. So the results that we're going to use are basically the following. What we do is we take our original series and we put it in an absolute value. So basically, I mean obviously that's going to just make all the terms positive. And then we look at that new series and it says suppose that new series converges. If that converges the original series before we put it in absolute value, that original series also converges. Okay, so this is kind of the nice result. If the absolute value um, version of the series converges, so does the original, and we call the series absolutely convergent. It's possible that you put the series in absolute value and it diverges, but if you had just left it alone in the first place, it turns out that that series could have converged. If that happens, we call the original series conditionally convergent, and it's possible that we put it in absolute value, it diverges, um, we look at the original, it diverges, and we just say, well, that series is divergent. Okay, so let me do my three examples here. Okay, so in one of the uses of um, absolute convergence, I mean, suppose your series, ugh, suppose your series, um, you know, has a bunch of signs and it kind of jumps around. Maybe it doesn't alternate. Maybe there's a bunch of positives and negatives all over the place. At least if you put it in absolute value, it's going to make everything positive and that will be useful. Okay, so this first series, let's, uh, again, in all of these we're asking are they absolutely convergent, um, conditionally convergent, or just plain old divergent. Okay, so in my first example here, um, suppose we have the series n equals 0 to infinity of negative 10 to the n over n factorial. Okay, so we're going to ask, uh, try to answer this question of it being absolutely convergent or not. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to put it in absolute value, and I think, what would that actually do? In what way would that alter my series? Well, notice we have this negative 10 to the n power. Um, you know, this would alternate between positive and negatives um, as n increases. Well, if you put it in absolute value, it's simply going to make everything positive, and then we're just going to be left with the series n equals 0 to infinity of 10 to the n over n factorial. Okay, I think there's a lot of ways. Um, okay, so okay. Well, first, let me not get ahead of myself. Let's look at the so now, let's look at this series and um, basically we have to figure out does it converge or diverge. Um, and typically, when I see factorials, I like to use the ratio test. Okay, um, so I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty of the different tests. I have videos for that. But remember, it says you take the limit as n goes to infinity. Everywhere there's an n, I plug in n plus 1's, so I get 10 to the n plus 1. In the denominator, I'm going to get n plus 1 factorial. Um, I'm going to divide by the original, and that's going to just simply have the effect of uh, flipping. So I'll have 10 factorial, excuse me, n factorial over 10 to the n. And now if I compute this limit, um, it looks like to me we're going to have the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, I've got 10 to the n plus 1, 10 to the n. I'm going to be left with a single 10 on top. If you simplify the n factorial over the n plus 1 factorial, that's just going to leave you with n plus 1. And again, I have videos on simplifying factorials and dealing with these, um, if you have questions about that. And we take the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, this limit, the um, denominator will get really big. We have 10 over a big number. Hey, that goes to 0. The ratio test says if it's less than 1, then our series is, in fact, absolutely convergent. So at this point, we're done. Um, we've now shown that our series is absolutely convergent. So that original thing we started with before I put in the absolute value, 
when we had negative 10 to the n over n factorial, that will also converge, okay? That's the result that we have in this case, okay? Since this um, series is absolutely convergent, it means before we ever put the absolute value on there, that series would also be convergent. Okay, so let's look at another one here. Suppose I have the series, um, let's say, n equals 1 to infinity. And suppose I've got the series negative 1 to the n plus 1 over the fourth root of n. Okay, well, if I look at the absolute value of all of this stuff, again, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over the fourth root of n, that's just going to get rid of the, the alternating sign, the negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. Well, that's just going to leave me with positive 1 to some power. Um, well, 1 to any power is just 1. And then I would be left with the fourth root of n in the denominator. But that's n to the 1 fourth. And hopefully at this point you recognize that this is a divergent p-series. Okay, so remember for our p-series to converge, um, this exponent has to be larger than 1. Well, that doesn't happen, it diverges. So at this point, I know this original series, it's not absolutely convergent. Um, so now I ask myself, well, is it conditionally convergent? Okay, well, if, if you look at this very original series before we put it in absolute value, this is simply going to be an alternating series, so all we have to do is show two things. We have to show the limit as n goes to infinity. Again, you, you, when you do the alternating series test, you basically neglect the alternating sign part. Um, I look at what's left over, so I would have 1 over the fourth root of n, and we have to show that this limit equals 0. Well, certainly as n goes to infinity, the denominator is going to get arbitrarily large. That limit will be 0. That's one condition. The other condition we have to show is decreasing. Um, you know, again, you could use the first derivative test if you really had to justify this. But you have to show that a sub n, or excuse me, usually we label it b sub n, 1 over the fourth root of n, we have to show this decreases as n gets bigger. Well, I mean, plug in numbers, what are you going to get? You're going to get the 1 over the fourth root of 1, 1 over the fourth root of 2, 1 over the fourth root of 3, etc. Clearly, the denominator is getting larger. That means the terms are decreasing. So the second condition of the alternating series test is satisfied. Um, that means this alternating series converges. Since the absolute value um, uh, series didn't converge, we call this series then conditionally convergent. Okay, so putting them at an absolute value messed it up, but leaving the absolute values off uh, made it converge. Well, we call it conditionally convergent. So let's do one last one. Um, oh, I've started using wet erase markers. I don't know that I like them. So. All right, anyway, um, let's look at one last series. So same thing, convergent, absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Suppose it's n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n plus 5. And again, we want to ask, answer this question, absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Well. Um, so if I ask myself, is it absolutely convergent? Again, that means I have to put it in absolute value. Again, if you put it in absolute value, it's just going to have the effect of getting rid of this negative 1 to the n. So that le would leave me with the series n equals 1 to infinity of just n over n plus 5. But notice um, if we call, if you think about the test for divergence, um, the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 5, that's simply going to equal 1, which is not 0. And that means the series diverges. So the series diverges um, by that test for divergence. And if you, so now we could ask ourselves, is it conditionally convergent? 
almost there. Let's see, is it condition conditionally convergent? Well, the same thing. If you look at the original series, um, just by the test for divergence, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, negative 1 to the n, um, n over n plus 5, basically what this is going to do, um, the n over n plus 5, that's going to approach 1. The first part, it's going to keep alternating. So eventually, this limit's just going to alternate between values arbitrarily close to positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, etc. Um, the moral of the story is this limit does not exist. It says the limit has to be 0. Well, it's not. So that means this series um, just plain old diverges. Okay, so three different series. I hope these all make some sense. Again, you know, I, I, I thought about doing three real simple examples just to illustrate the ideas, but I thought, you know, let's do just three maybe actually useful examples. Um, hopefully you didn't get lost in all the different tests, the uh, ratio test and the test for divergence. Um, so, all right, um, again, I hope it makes some sense. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them. Hopefully me or someone else out there can help you out.